When life and emotions get too big, it's nice to shrink problems to size. An unkempt room is a couple of scattered single socks. A marathon is a couple of single miles. Miniatures make life seem designed and manageable. So I went to this play called Twelfth Night. Um, it's a Shakespeare play, and in this version, it's set in the Caribbean. I wasn't too into it at first, but the more I watched, I totally related. Um, there is this butler who's made fun of by um, all the um, people working in this lady's court, and um, all these servants, they write a love letter. They pretend the love letter is from the lady or the queen, and they write it to the butler, um, telling him that uh, the, the queen is in love with the butler. Um, but of course, the servants wrote this letter, so the queen has nothing to do with it. So the butler like um, announces his love to the queen and like just um, gets super shamed. He's like um, put into prison and put in locks. Um, and the play ends with the queen kind of um, understanding the butler, and everyone kind of ends up with their soulmate, um, except for the butler. Um, so you kind of really pity the butler, but. I love how they end with the Sting song called Fragile and um, there's a verse it says um, for all those born beneath an angry star lest we forget how fragile we are um, and it's just for me I think it's talking about the butler who is so isolated um, and all the servants they just make fun of him and he's kind of in his own world. He's just so fragile, like um, someone writes him a love letter and he's just like instantly, you know, falls head over heels. And um, beneath that, there is so much anger and there's so much hurt. It reminds me of a psalm in the Bible. Uh, which says each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. Um, everyone feels their own feelings and I think it takes a lot of compassion for someone else to really understand. It's almost impossible, I think. Well, I was just like, Shakespeare is such a genius! <laughs> so, yeah.
So I went to the Huntington Garden and I saw a ton of beautiful bonsai designs and they just made me think how when my ego is super big and I feel like in my pride I can do everything, I think God humbles me and um, from God's perspective, um, He's so big and my life is so small and um, God helps me realize that my problems are small as well. I've been listening to Greg Laurie's um, YouTube. Um, it's called God's Answer to Fear, Worry and Anxiety and it's been helping me realize um, how uh, providential God is and um, that I just need to go to him when things are a little too crazy. <laughs> I've set up um, this is my linseed oil I'm gonna try to remember as many colors as I can <laughs> um, this paper is just a um, 
actually used more for um, acrylics. Um, it's like a stay wet type of paper. Um, but I've just taped it down. Um, let's see. This one is burnt umber. I think this is raw sienna. Um, cadmium red. One of these are Alizarin Crimson, which is more uh, darker red hue. Um, this one, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, let's see, this one's a cadmium red, I believe. Uh, this is like a yellow ochre, but it just looks really dark on camera. Um, cadmium yellow. Yeah, they were both cadmium yellows. One is um, more of a pale hue and titanium white, uh, Mars black, diosin, I never know the full name, diosidine purple. Uh, that one is cobalt blue deep. And then I have a lot of blues. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> um, and then, um, let's see, the all important one is the olive green. The lighter one here is um, Cinnabar Green Light, which is made by Rembrandt Paint. Um, that darker green one, I think I got with my Chicago colors. So yeah, that's my palette. So the holidays are kind of anxiety inducing for me, <laughs> to be honest, but isn't every day. Um, when I think about painting, like intense painting, it's funny. I always like, I think certain people will like imagine painting eyes or um, lips or, you know, that makes them happy. But I think when I think of painting something happy, I think of painting knees. <laughs> and it's not like a weird like fetish or something like that. But I think in college, I um, spent a lot of time mixing and that's how I learned um, Kind of skin tones was mixing paints to paint my dad um and i remember painting his knee like it took like so long like hours in like the studio class i was taking so i think like when i think of like painting all the bands of color um that make up a knee and all the anatomy it like puts me in this like weird like meditative piece <laughs> um so I thought maybe I would paint, um, dive into Esther's knee here. Um, so whenever I'm in like a anatomy like funk, I go to this book um, and it has really great um, turnaround of um, legs. Oh, it's like so torn up. I just have to like pull out the pages. Yeah, turnaround of the legs. So you just have to make sure that you're looking at the, the right or the left or the right leg, you know? Um, so when I'm painting this leg, this this is like the um, left leg, right? The right leg is behind. It's kind of hard to see, but. Uh, so I'm gonna look for a reference that is like a three quarter outside view of the knee, right? And which none of these are. So I think I have a, Okay, so here we are. I think I found my knee. Um, this one, it's pretty much outside three quarter. Um, you see what you call the patella, the kneecap here, other landmarks. Um, this is the great trochanter, which uh, attaches to this like hip muscle. That's the tibia. The fibula is coming out um, on the outside. And then I'm going to try to turn this to color. Um, this is black and white. Our color scheme here has kind of been this like purplish uh, when it's uh, in shadow and more reddish uh, skin tone when it's in the light. So I'm gonna turn what I see in this book to 
what I see here. One day I need like a camera attached to my head. So I don't have to hold it with my left hand to show you exactly where I'm going. Okay, so we are technically flipping this in our head, right? If I want to make it simpler for myself, I probably, you know, take a picture of this with my MacBook and like flip it. Her leg is a little elongated just to be cool. <laughs> I have all my colors, but I think I really just need, um, you know, like a brownish. And then I would try to match these because I have this existing painting. Okay, so that's too red, right? So we're gonna dumb that down with um, some purplish, greenish, olive green. It's so weird like saying what you're doing because I think kind of subconsciously test things out to see if they work. Um, so what I'm doing is mixing olive green with that brown color I had. And this just is me testing it to um, desaturate. Because um, red and green are complement colors, they're opposite colors in the color wheel, this desaturates it. Okay, so Still too red. I'm gonna add some of this little light blue color to desaturate it even more. Let's see what happens. It's closer now, right? Right here. But um, we want to lighten it up a bit. So I'm gonna add some titanium white. It better. I'm starting to match it. And I think the goal right now is just to um, put more paint onto this wooden board, you know. Um, it does look kind of cool that it lightens up here. Um, so maybe I'll start adding white as I, white and uh, cadmium yellow as I get here. What about this book is I know exactly where um, I want my highlights to be to show volume. So you see there's the highlight of the kneecap here that um, attaches to um, the, let's see what this is called, H. <laughs> H is the rectus femoris. Not the quadriceps? I don't know. So yeah. You obviously don't want to paint all of that highlight because then I think she'll look like she's anorexic or something, but you kind of could hint towards that. And um, when things get close to the bone, um, like versus the muscle here, things get brighter. So here is the edge of that patella going up. This is the um, tibia. The highlight disappears into the leg. on my palette I have my light to dark um, for the knee. I'm not an anatomy expert but I think this muscle that's connected to the IT band I think it um, you get that bump like lump lump um, when this tightens when you stand right so I might show that crevice that shadow that happens right here. So I think according to that anatomy, it could be something like that. I 
thinking about how that shadow hits the skin from the dress. So I'm going to start adding some diocesine purple into my uh, brownish color to see what happens. So getting my diocesine purple here, mixing it here. Cast shadows, they are hard, right? Um, so, which means like um, when it hits the skin, um, it should be a pretty solid line, rather a faded line. Um, but obviously that depends on the lighting, but I'm just gonna make a shape that's appealing. Maybe it fades off into that. Some cadmium red to, I think the middle tone. And then when you wanna get between two values, you can do that. So creating a chart on your palette. I think I wanna do this, um, cause remember how I said like the blood goes to certain places? I think I could apply this to the knee, so let's see. Okay, so if I put some of this reddish color around the knee, it might look more human. I kind of like to show the calf here as a muscle back there, so I might like um, accentuate like a line here. I'm gonna use a blue mixed with some of our existing color to get that calf in there. I'm rethinking this absorbent <laughs> acrylic paper, actually. I think it's absorbing um, the paints, so it's kind of... <laughs> Hard to get it off the paper actually, so next time I can go back to like wax paper. Okay, so right here is the fibula. I think that goes all the way down here to the ankle bone. So I'm going to paint these two hard highlights for the bones. Okay, let's choose. I think it's around right here. top attachment and the ankle bone right here. And you don't want to paint that whole ankle bone. You just want like to pop a highlight. So something like that. Like that. And then kind of like have like a fuzzy little shape that connects the two. Okay, here we are. Me. <laughs> this one was a hard one. Yeah, I I think when I start getting more um, into the highlight colors, um, I remembered that my color scheme was um, more lime in the highlights. So right here, I added more um, lime color there. And um, I think it's just the game of trying to keep the cylindrical form here um, while, you know, punching up some of the muscles. Um, like, as it kind of like goes into a curve here, um, like you have like different facets that um, recede into the shadows there. Like in this drawing, there's all these muscles. So it's kind of hard to um, keep that rounded shape while um, trying to delineate some of these muscles that flatten the leg. So keeping that round form is really important. Um, I try to accentuate that 
tibia form, which um, goes, curves around and um, touches the other side of this ankle here. And um, that's the patella. I'm still not too happy with it because I think it should overlap the tibia there. Um, and then playing with the cast shadow that goes over the leg because of the dress. Yeah, <laughs> this is a hard one. Um, and um, I think I need to remember when things are getting a little too blotchy um, to unify forms and put shadows and shadows and lights and lights. So it's still a single tube of a lake. So <laughs> maybe it's a Monday night. <laughs> so I'm back to a glass palette. Um, yeah, no to self, don't use foam core and don't use um, don't use anything that's like super absorbent. <laughs> Just go back to a picture frame. That's always the best. This might be plastic, it's not glass, huh? Anyway, <laughs> um, as you can see, the as I get into the highlights, so messy palette, but you can still see there's the uh, darker colors that go into the lighter colors here. The lighter colors are more lime, so. I think at the end of a painting, you should always still kind of see some kind of dark to light gradation. So, yeah. We're back to our normal brushing time. <laughs> always important to get your soap. Rinse out all the gunk. So, I've been reading Esther. It's pretty interesting like to read the footnotes. I like never read footnotes, but um, Esther, um, he, she married the King Ahasuerus or his other name is King Xerxes. And in the footnotes it says, um, uh, Ahasuerus' Greek name was Xerxes. His Persian name was Ka Sha Yar Shan. Xerxes I, also known as Xerxes the Great, the son of Darius the Great, ruled 486 to 465 BC. He is the Xerxes who invaded Greece, was stopped temporarily at Thermopylae, defeated at the naval battle at Salamis, and nearly annihilated at Plataea in 479 BC. The French excavations at Susa, which I think where um, his palace is, um, the French excavations at Susa in 1880 to 1890 uncovered the great palace of Circes, which is what we're painting with the pillar where Esther would have lived. The building covered two and one half acres. So it's a pretty large palace. Um, the finds at Susa from this period were so astonishing that the Louvre in Paris devoted two large rooms to the exhibition of the treasures. Xerxes' tomb, looted in antiquity, is believed to be among the rock-cut tombs at Naqsh-e Rajab an archaeological site in Iran about 10 miles northwest of the site of ancient Persepolis. It's pretty interesting. This is all the historical um, context of Esther. Um, so yeah, maybe while you're washing your dishes, I'm washing my brushes. So I hope you have a good night. <laughs> So this picture makes me laugh. I actually had to vacuum it because it was covering so much dust. But this is the painting I painted in college um, of my dad. And um, this is the, 
the knees I was talking about that took me a long time, but it really taught me how to... Hi, BB. <laughs> it really taught me how to mix color. Um, like if you see, um, there's that core shadow here, um, which is burnt umber. And um, as you uh, move away, I think I was using um, like burnt sienna. And then as you go to the light um, on the edges of his leg, it was more um, titanium white and cadmium yellow and cadmium red. So this taught me a lot how to mix these like bands of colors, you know, like from dark to light and even to add some blues when it does happen um, that uh, something is in the shadow. So yeah, <laughs> that's why I love painting knee knees, I think, because it's so, um, uh, reminds me of this painting. I also like noticed how well this shoe was painted. I'm like proud of myself. Um, so yeah, the theme of this, um, <laughs> a lot of people know that my dad was a super workaholic. Um, so I painted him kind of like in like despair, <laughs> even though he, he never complains, but um, he's like uh, sitting on one of these crates that um, I think uh, packed a lot of those treasures in Pompeii. You know, um, if you know the story where like everyone was buried um, in a volcanic ash and they were covered um, in the pose that they were uh, sitting in when the volcano erupted. So there was a man that like was covering his face when the volcano erupted and like totally like mummified his like posture. And um, I think this is like an actual painting from like that, um, that city, you know? So I like copied that painting. I put my dad in this like, um, like he's like frozen in time as this like workaholic kind of person. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy because like I learned how to, um, even in this hand here, like um, this core shadow, um, it like wraps all the way around um, and creates this shape. And it's like kind of like lessons I have to relearn that there's always a core shadow shape that, um, uh, you know, it's like a different part of the painting. The dark and the light are like two realms in a painting almost. So yeah, knees. <laughs>